I want to start by thanking God for bringing us here this evening. I also want to thank uh, the Lord God for His revelations, His revelations that we find in His Word, uh, the Bible. The Bible that is filled with prophecies, prophecies that only God could have communicated and inspired. Prophecies are more than just a prediction. A prediction is more like kind of like um, estimating the forecast, you know, to see what the weather will look like in the upcoming days or weeks. But as we know, predictions on the weather could at times be off or wrong. Um, so science and technology, um, you know, predicting the atmosphere and the temperature could be wrong at times. A prediction is like you making your best guess at who's going to win the next soccer game or basketball game. So you might be right, but there's a chance that you might be wrong. There's that chance you might be wrong. Um, but a prophecy is something that will 100% come to pass as it was written, um, and it will be fulfilled 100% because God knows the outcome. God is outside of time, and He's omniscient. So I want to take a few minutes and just share a couple of passages from the Bible um, that show a prophecy that not only shows when Messiah was going to come, but more importantly, who Messiah is. So this passage we'll be looking at shows what's going to happen before Messiah is going to come, but I want to focus on who Jesus is. Now, I know a lot of us here know Jesus, on an intimate, personal level, but many in the world have not yet come to know him. Maybe some of us here have not yet come to know him in that way. So, let's put aside what we've been told, uh, what you know we've been told growing up, what other religions have to say about who Jesus is, um, and let's definitely put aside what movie stars have to say about who Jesus is, actors who have such a huge influence on the world, uh, movie stars who use Jesus' name as a curse word, like probably 10 times in the same movie. Um, but we never ever hear anyone use, let's say, Muhammad's name as a swear word or in a worthless, unworthy, vain manner. Like, oh, Muhammad ibn Abdullah. You know, as a, as a form of, as a common exclamation or... Uh, like an expression of frustration, or even Buddha's name, like, ah, um, Gautama Siddhartha, I think that's how you say his name. You know, as, is that how, how you say his name? Or, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't know, I looked at you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, or even their own mother's name as profane, you know, blasphemous profanity. But we always hear, people use Jesus' name um, in that way. Um, so let's look at who Jesus is, uh, because like I said, I think this is one of the most, if not the most important questions um, that we're going to encounter. I know I did. Um, even if you were raised in a Christian household, you know, at one point you're going to come across that question, who is Jesus? So I'll be jumping from one page to another, but I decided to have the verses up on the screen. That way you guys can follow along. We don't have to flip left and right. Um, if you ask 10 different people who Jesus is, you're probably going to get 10 different answers. If you ask a Buddhist, they'll say, well, uh, he was an enlightened man. If you ask uh, a Hindu, they'll say um, he was a great teacher or a wise teacher. If you ask an atheist, they'll say um, he was just another figure in history. Um, other atheists might say uh, that he never existed. Um, if you ask a Muslim, they'll say um, he was just a prophet, just a mere man. Um, a Mormon would tell you that Jesus is uh, Lucifer's elder brother, that they're spirit siblings or spirit brothers in the heavenly realms. If you ask a Jehovah's Witness, they'll say he's Archangel Michael. Just, an, just a created being, an angel. But when you look at all these answers and belief systems, there's one thing in common, and that's Jesus is not 
God Almighty himself. So an honest and genuine person looking for truth or looking to find an answer um, about an event or a person or, I don't know, a case of some sort, they'll want to go to, if they're being honest and genuine, they'll, they should go to the earliest and the closest evidence or documents or eyewitnesses. Like, it doesn't make sense for me to go to Somalia to know more about the uh, Chinese culture or people or, um, you know, society or China. Should we believe in what Justin Trudeau has to say about Islam and the Quran and Muhammad and his lifestyle, or should we go directly to the source itself, the Quran and the Hadiths? So in the same way we're asking this question, who is Jesus? So let's go to those passages. Um, so in the Old Testament, if we go to Isaiah 40, in verse 1, now Isaiah was written around 700 years before Christ was born. So in Isaiah 40 we read, Comfort, yes, comfort my people, says your God. Speak comfort to Jerusalem and cry out to her that her warfare is ended, that her iniquity is pardoned, for she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. Verse 3, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be exalted, and every mountain and hill brought low. The crooked places shall be made straight, and the rough places smooth. The glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. So in verses 1 and 2, God promises His people that He'll pardon their sins, that um, He'll comfort His people, and that their warfare will end. Now the question is, how did He do this? In the next verse, we see that there will be one who will come from the wilderness, in the wilderness, crying, making way, paving the way, preparing the way for the Lord. The Hebrew word for Lord is Yahweh. So this person is making way for Yahweh, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. So this person that's going to come is making way for Yahweh, our God. We see the same prophecy in the book of Malachi. Malachi was written over 400 years before Christ was born. In Malachi chapter 3, sorry, before we go to Malachi, I just want to address this. Uh, so here it says, every valley shall be exalted. Every, so every valley shall be exalted, every mountain brought low, the crooked places made straight. So basically everything will come back to equilibrium, just proper when the Lord comes. The glory of the Lord shall be revealed. As we know in Isaiah, it says, God will not share his glory with another. So this is Yahweh himself coming, uh, and all flesh shall see Yahweh. So Malachi chapter 3, starting from verse 1, we read, Behold, I send my messenger, and he will prepare the way before me. And the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple, even the messenger of the covenant, in, wh in whom you delight. Behold, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. So God is speaking here. God is saying that, he, again, he's going to send his messenger, the one crying in the wilderness, making the way for the Lord. Um, and he, his messenger will prepare the way for God himself, um, the messenger of the covenant, who is God, um, that he is coming. So when we go to the, the New Testament, we see the fulfillment of this uh, when we go to Mark chapter 1. We see that prophecy being fulfilled. Um, we see that John the Baptist came um, crying in the wilderness, preparing the way for Yahweh, our God. But who came after John? Jesus did. So going back to all those other religions who say Jesus is just, I don't know, a created being or just a man or an angel. Well, in the Old Testament, it says Yahweh will come after this, this messenger, John the Baptist. So Mark chapter 1, we read, 
the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as it is written in the prophets. That's Isaiah and Malachi. Behold, I send my messenger before your face, who will prepare your way before you. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. And then in verse 4, we see John came baptizing in the wilderness and preaching a baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. And then moving down to verse 7, and he, John the Baptist, preached, saying, There comes one after me who is mightier than I, whose sandal strap I am not worthy to stoop down and loose. Indeed, I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Um, and then in John, the Gospel of John, in verse, chapter 1, verse 19, we read this about John the Baptist. We read, Now this is the testimony of John. When the Jews sent priests and Levites and, uh, from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed and did not deny, but confessed, I am not the Christ. And they asked him, Who then are you, Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? And he answered, No. Then they said to him, Who are you that we may give an answer to those who sent us? What do you say by yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. And then moving down to verse 29, the next day John saw Jesus coming to, toward him and said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Uh, this is he of whom I said, After me comes a man who is prefer preferred before me, for he was before me. So we see the prophecy in the Old Testament, and then we see it being fulfilled in the New Testament. Um, just to show a couple more verses in the New Testament showing that Jesus is God himself, not a prophet, not an angel, not, you know, Lucifer's elder brother, some crazy unbiblical, you know, beliefs. In Romans 9, it calls Jesus the eternally blessed God. Christ is the eternally blessed God. Um, in Titus chapter 2, again, Jesus Christ is called God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from every lawless deed and purify for himself his own special people, sell us for good works. We, we want to always go to the scriptures when we're evangelizing with the lost or with a confused person who thinks they know. You want to go to the scriptures because it's clear who Jesus is. He's God himself. He's Yahweh. Now, we can get into the Trinity another time. Like, how does that make sense? You know, is he the Father? He's not the Father. He's the Son of God. But within the complexity of the essence of God, um, there's the three distinct persons, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Uh, I guess I'll close in prayer. Cool. All right. Uh, Heavenly Father, Lord, we love you. We thank you for your truth, for the wisdom, the knowledge, the revelations, the mysteries, the prophecies that are in your word. Uh, we thank you for revealing these truths to us before they came to pass so that when it does come to pass, we would know that it was from you. Um, so we thank you for your word that we have in our hands so easily accessible. Um, and we, I just pray that you'll strengthen us to, yeah, just be ready to defend the faith um, when we're asked these questions. Who is Jesus? You know, why do we believe what we believe? Um, yeah, and let it be done to your glory uh, that we may be decreased and you may be exalted. In Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah,